tractor supply. I'm get myself in trouble. There's always something going on on Grandpa's farm. A place where you're always welcome. Come on, Lily. Let's go feed. Oh boy, so Americanas, these are a, a dual purpose breed, they're heavy, they're, they could be eaten as a meat bird, so that'd be good use for the, for the cockerels, and the hens lay uh, colored eggs, they're sort of light blue eggs, so they have Americanas, they have bannies, I don't want any bannies, and black sex links, I don't want black sex links. Black sex links are great, great layers. Dual purpose chicken, bread for egg production. And they have some American, or some uh, Bantams. They have some Americanas. And something else in there, I don't know, those are called Americanas. They're all Americanas. Even the light colored ones? Mm -hmm. Yep. Really? Yep, just different colors. I didn't know Americanas came in that light color like that. Technically, as a previous purebred show quality Americana you breeders. Okay, you? <laughs> okay, to my YouTube channel. Christy? Yep. Hi, Christy. I'm Carl. Hi. Hi. So I used to breed show quality Americanas. Huh? As a previous show quality Americana breeder. These are all just Easter eggers. Um, yeah. These will none of these will adhere to show quality. Yeah, I'm not. Standards. I'm not interested in showing. I'm just getting some eggs for my wife. So they come <clears> in <throat> many more colors than the breed standard would call for. So right. some of these are going to end up. They won't be white. They'll be almost silver. Um, huh. So like this guy. Like here. a silvery buff or something. Yeah, you can already see. The oh yeah. Okay. They they won't quite be silver. Gray. Yeah, you'll end up with something that'll look a little bit like that. Okay. Well, here's what I'd like to get. I'd like to get six. They're straight run, right? Uh, these guys are pullets. Everything. Oh, they're all pullets, yep, really? They're all pullets. Wow. Okay. Well, I want six of the darker Americanas. Okay. And I'd like your complete setup here: the feeder, the water, the light, the, the tank, the whole thing. All right. I'm gonna grab. Kirby, are you busy? Yes. Is your friend busy? And that's the setup right there. And I can reuse that tank. I can go ahead and use that tank later on as a stock tank, or I can use it as a brooder box for something else later on. But it's the perfect thing to use as a brooder. And they're about 80 bucks or so for one. But it makes for a really good one. That's why all the that's why all the, the tractor supplies and all the places use these stock tanks. They're perfect for it. And you can clean it out and scrub it out and disinfect it. <clears throat> All right, so let's grab. So these tanks are outside. Let me use. Okay. <clears throat> there's, I think there's one out there that I saw. Yeah, I do have one outside. Is it in good shape? Yes, because we just had to get all new ones in because I sold a whole bunch. Okay. <laughs> All right. As soon as my new guy comes back, I'm going to indoctrinate him and check it out. Okay. Well, then here's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. i got a couple of things I want to pick up. Okay. I want to shop, and I'll meet you guys at the register. Okay. I will gather everything for you. Um, as far as feeders and waters, do you want the red ones? I've got... Um, well, I'll tell you what. I'll, teal. I'll pick out the feeder, the water. I'll grab the light. Okay. And I'll grab the shavings. Okay. You get the chickens and the tank. So how many chickens? Six. Just six of the dark ones. Six of the dark ones. And okay. they're pullets, so they're just the females. Yep. Good. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Don't have to worry about crowing. <laughs> and you have a uh, starter, starter grower organic yes. right there, they're, huh? Yep. That's what they're currently on. That's what they're currently on. Awesome. Awesome.
I'll get one of them. And we've got some of our um, feeders and waters are right here. You have grit? Oh, okay. Our grit is over in our main aisle. Okay, I'll go over there and get some. Okay. All right, and I'll grab a light. The what are? The bulbs are down my main aisle. Down the main right aisle. Here. Yeah, they were right here, but I still. This is the same as these are all the same, right? Yes, those are all the same. Okay. Yep. All right, so I got to go grit and pick out a feeder and a water I want. Okay. And I need a feed vault for them. Chicken feed. Twenty-three bucks, really. Twenty-three bucks for a little one like that? Oh, that's a good deal. On clearance. The gamma seals work? Oh yeah. You know what? Twenty-three bucks, I'm gonna get both of them. Okay, grit. I need some dog bones. Oh, I don't need dog bones today. I don't need dog bones today. Tractor Supply, one of my favorite places. One of. Okay. Where? Oh, okay. Um, so I need a feed scoop for them. Probably could use the same one I'm using for everything else. So no, I don't need a feed scoop. They don't need a salt block. I need little bitty, little bitty feeders and waters. It just seems like an awful lot for six. Seems like an awful lot for six. I don't see any smaller ones though. So I guess that'll that'll be that. And I'll get some heat lamp bulbs. Oh. oh I like that one better. I like that one. I'm old school people. I am old school. 15 pound hanging feeder and the old classic look at that isn't that cool or shit awesome there you go poultry waterer that'll be great for them all right i want to get a little grit they're way too small for mealworms grit grit Grit. Fresh flakes pine shavings. They gotta have bigger bags than that of pine shavings. Oh, that's a pretty good size one, though. You know, that'll do me for now. Nine bucks. Too many for us. Poultry grit. That's a big bag of grit. For my six little chickies, that'll last them a lifetime. I gotta have a smaller bag of grit. Oh, here's the little feeders and waters. You know what? For the time being, it's awful sharp. It's got sharp edges. I don't want them up against sharp edges. There you go. That's man. That's awful big. You know what? I'm sure I can find something at home to put a plate or something in there to put that in. I'll give them a little water. Oh, I'm gonna get the bigger water. I didn't see that one there. There you go. That'd be better. Well, I'll have to 
figure out something for some grit, apparently. Chicken grit. There you go. Little five pounds of grit. That's what I want, a little five pounder. Okay, feeder water. Feeder water, water. Storage, feed, bulbs, lamp. Feeder water, bulbs, lamp. Feed, that's that, that, my shavings. That's perfect. <coughs> $5.99 for that big one. Premium pine shavings. And what's the difference? Fines, flakes. Flakes or fines? I'm going to go put this back. They look like baby chickens to me. All right, chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets, that's right. And they'll have the. Yes, they went out. I need to get straw too, so they can get both at the same time. Yes. Um. Well, they. Yes. Just to let them know which one. Um, they should still have it on the thing. Okay. I don't, but I will rescan it for you. Um. They're grabbing it, but just let them know about the straw. Right. And he'll bring it up here. That's what I'm gonna do. Yep. Okay. And they're hopefully bringing the tank up. But I got a new guy that just started today, so. My other guy went out to go. Well, I got to pull up to the truck to get the straw anyway, so we can pick it up over there. Both of my guys are out. They're both outside, so. Should be about right. Yeah, we gotta put some heat on in here. You gotta heat our little babies. We gotta heat the little babies. Our little chicky babes. Make it easier to get the straw in. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. And then do you mind uh, which way we stack them or? No, just leave enough room in there so I can get to that get uh, stuff that's back there and I can get that in there. All right. It's his first day.
Excellent job, gentlemen. Thank you much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna be on my YouTube channel. What's your YouTube? Grandpa. Uh, Grandpa's Farm. Grandpa's Farm. We'll look it up. All right. All right. Do that. Have a good day. All right. Take care. <clears throat> all right, kids. So we're heading home. A rogue day. <laughs> a rogue day. A tractor supply. Got into all kinds of bad stuff. I got biddies. I got biddies. I got chickens. <laughs> I love having chickens. No, seriously, I cannot tell you how much I love having chickens. I love having poultry. <coughs> Johanna made my old my whole week. Actually, maybe she made my whole month when she said to me yesterday she wanted to get chickens so she could have eggs. The duck eggs are a little too rich for her, she says. She, uh, they, they just are too rich. When she makes like a egg salad or something like that, she finds the duck eggs are just too rich. She doesn't like eating them. <clears throat> and my children, <laughs> my children also uh, snub, I'm gonna call them out here, they snub my duck eggs. Why do they snub my duck eggs? Okay, they snub the duck eggs because they weren't raised on eating duck eggs. People seem to have a natural proclivity to, uh, you know, turn their nose up at things that they didn't eat when they were growing up. If mom and dad didn't feed it to them, you know, they're not gonna have it now. In fact is, when my kids were little, I did not feed them duck eggs. We had chicken eggs, but not duck eggs. So they're kind of like, oh, I don't like duck eggs. Well, all right. So now we have some chickens and they'll have some chicken eggs. <clears throat> we'll see. We're gonna just, uh, these biddies, I'm gonna have to get them up pretty big and then uh, we'll mix them in with the ducks or maybe we'll make them their own pen. We got time. They're just day old chicks or, uh, I'd say they're two or three day old chicks at this point. They're pretty small, pretty small. Americanas we ended up buying. I was hoping for some white rocks or some black ostelorps, uh, but we got, we got some Americanas. Now, these are not, as the girl said there at the store, these are not, you know, bred to standard uh, Americanas. They're more Easter egger, which is sort of a looser term for, you know, a, a chicken that lays a multicolored egg. Not necessarily brown or white. They will lay an egg somewhere else, like green or blue or pink, um, tan. I've seen uh, a number of variations come from the uh, Easter Egger. Easter Egger, it's Easter. We got Easter chicks on Easter. Actually, today's the day after Easter, the Monday after Easter, so. We got Easter Eggers, and they will lay colorful eggs, which my kids will probably still snub because they're not white or they're not brown. Oh well. I tried to convince my grandson that brown eggs meant they were chocolate, but I couldn't get him to go for that. He's too smart for that. He's too smart for that, so. Anyhow, fun day out here running around, getting some baby chicks. Load the back of the truck up, got a bunch of straw for the poop lumps That's a poop lump Yep. Got the poopies some straw so I can help clean up their bedding. <clears throat> they go through about six bales a month in their bedding area. So, <coughs> anyhow. Now here's the thing, I bought a metal chicken feeder. I bought a metal chicken waterer. I bought a metal stock tank. Those will last me 20 years, easily 20 years. I will get 20 years worth of use out of them. So when you go and you buy, I hear the chicks pecking on the plywood, or the paper. The box. I don't know. What is that? What do you call that? Is that cardboard? Oh, you can see him in the hole. You can see him in the little hole there. You guys see him in there? <laughs> They're in there. I haven't heard him chirp yet. Anyhow, so you spend $22, $23 buying the metal feeder and the metal water, and it lasts you for 20 years. So, basically a buck. You know, I look at it that way, dollar ten. Caught, you know, for for this batch of chickens, these six little biddies, 
and there's going to be lots more biddies over the years. I can assure you of that. I, I, I amortize them at a dollar a piece. $89 for that stock tank. That's kind of spendy. $89 for that stock tank. But when I get done using it as a brooder for the uh, for the baby chicks, the poop alums are going to love having that as a tank full of water for them to jump in and play in this summer when it starts getting hot. They will absolutely be jumping in and out of that. I know Pluto... I know Pluto would really like that. So, two feet high. I don't know if they're going to be able to get in and out of it that easy, but I'll put uh, something in there for them to get up on some wood or something. I'll build them something, maybe. Or maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe I'll set it in the ground somewhere, build a platform up around it, and let the duckies swim in it. Or I might just hold on to it and let my cows drink out of it. There you go. I have a nice size stock tank for my cows. For the moo cows. So. Anyhow, I want to address a couple things. Seen, a, seen some things on a couple channels that I just wanted to comment on. I'm, I'm not going to name names or whatever, but I saw one channel where they were plucking some poultry. And the guy was saying that the puts the birds in, you know, he, he kills the birds and puts them in a stock, or in a uh, uh, skull tank, which is what you do. You kill them, you put them in a skull tank, 160 degree water. Uh, if it's poultry like ducks or geese, you put a little soap in there with it, kill, break down the oils and the feathers. Anyhow, put them in there until your feathers start popping out easy. Then they, then you either pluck them by hand or you put them into a plucker. Except what he did is he took them out of his skull tank put them into a chill tank and then tried to pluck them and the plucker didn't do quite such a good job well of course not you put them in the skull tank which expanded all the the pores and all the follicles for the i don't know what you call them on feathers i assume it's a follicle i think that's the right word anyhow you uh, uh you expand the follicles putting them in the chill tank just tighten the follicles right back up again making the feathers harder to pull uh, don't do that the, the sequence is you kill the bird, you put it in a skull tank, you put it into the, uh, into the plucker or you hand pluck it, then you eviscerate it. You know what I mean by evisceration? You gut it and do all that stuff, prep it. Then it goes into a chill tank to be held in cold water until for a certain time, for a little while, an hour maybe, depending on how cold your water is. You want to get the body, the meat chilled down quickly. And then you put it in a bag, specially designed bags that are heat shrinkable. Uh, you put it in a bag, put a straw in it, wrap the bag up tight, put a zip tie around it, a little small zip tie, stick, stick it into the hot water, which will shrink up the bag, pull your straw, pull the zip tie, zip tie tight, and then they're ready for the freezer. That's the sequence, so anyhow. Then I saw another channel where a guy was talking about the, you know, oh, if you invest so much money into this and this is what, you, guys, feed costs were way up. You know, I don't know where he's buying his organic feed and whatever, but his feed costs are just astronomical. It just shouldn't cost anywhere near that much. So work on your, your supplies. And another thing I'm going to throw out here, if you're talking about just raising meat birds, I'm going to be doing a, uh, a study, but... One of the things that I have found is that you're better off getting a dual purpose bird like a white rock taking a little bit longer for it to get to weight uh, and, and so you know, everyone thinks well if it takes longer if you're feeding it longer your food cost is going to go up. No, it's not. Your white rocks, your white Cornish crosses, let me start there, your white Cornish crosses, your meat chickens your rescue rangers, your red ranger chickens, your your meat birds, uh, these hybrids that they have, they don't free range. I don't care what people say. They do not free range. They can't lift their butt to get past the food dish. They put on too much weight too quickly. They break down. So do not think that you're going to buy uh, these meat chickens and, and have the best deal. 
buy you some plain white rocks, Plymouth rocks, um, dual purpose heavy breeds, uh, Americanas like I just bought, feed them out over not eight or 10 weeks, but 18 to 20 weeks, you will feed the same amount of food, maybe even less, because they're gonna go out and free range. They're gonna go out and scratch around. They're gonna go out and get bugs and they're gonna eat them. The, uh, the, the Cornish crosses and stuff, they just don't free range, guys. You know, you can put them in a chicken tractor and move them around until the, the cows come home. They, they'll just sit inside there and wait for the food dish to be filled. So, anyhow, I gotta go ahead and unload these chicks, get them inside where it's warm and set this up. Uh, so I'm gonna get to doing that. Oh, are you all excited about the babies, huh? Are you all excited about the babies? You all excited about the babies? I think you are. Last time we had biddies, Lily and I were up in the cabin up in Alaska. <clears throat> she loved having them there. She was real excited about them. She would not hurt them. In fact, up in Alaska, she got her tennis ball and dropped her tennis ball in with the baby ducks so they could have a tennis ball to play with. Thought that was funny. And this is, I think, the uh, most perfect setup. A two foot by two foot by four foot stock tank, high enough they can't jump out of. Heat lamp, where I can, I can raise and lower that if I want to. They're not, they're not huddling tight, so they're not cold. But they are under the heat lamp, and that's fine. I got my little GoPro down there to videotape them up close. And there's a, got a great big feeder. Got water. I got another water for them, a bigger water. Once they get a little bigger, they can use that. And there they are, Jan and one of chickens. And we now have chicky babes. Puffy cheeks. Oh, little, little puffy cheeks. Lily, quit. 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 Don't get too excited. Little puffy cheeks. They're so cute with their little puffy cheeks. Yes, you are. You gonna, you gonna eat some? Alright. They're eating and drinking. As long as they're eating and drinking, they will be absolutely fine. Well, I hope you've uh, enjoyed watching me play around with the biddies and bringing another species here to the homestead. Kind of really looking forward to having the biddies around and enjoy watching them grow up and play. And I mean, they're just so cute, the little puffy cheeks and all. And of course, looking forward to the eggs as natural. Uh, we've got a new video coming out tomorrow. We're doing a collaboration uh, with Copperhead Road Homestead. Um, da J. Daniel Walker over there. He and I are doing a collab uh, in reference to what is our favorite animal to have on the homestead. So I'll be doing a video tomorrow in regards to that. Uh, anyhow, guys, appreciate you watching, following through, and uh, uh, I know this is a long video of me going and getting chickens and adding them into our farm our homestead, our little urban lot, but uh, I hope you enjoy following along and uh, watching the channel. Please do like and subscribe. The best thing you can do to help us, uh, if you would, would be to share our videos with other people, try to get subscribers, uh, and like I said, please do like and, and subscribe, share the videos, and with that said, folks, you have a, a good day. Be good, be careful, take good care of each other, and we'll have more for you here in the near future. Well, how about them toad suckers? Ain't they sappy? Sucking them toads all sure make them happy. Hug them, mug a toad suckers way down south. Sticking them sucky toads in their mouth. I'd be a toad sucker knowing a duck it. You just find an old toad and you rear back and suck it. Folks, you have a good day. Bye.